Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, I am going to talk about Azure Data Factory interview questions and this is part 6 in the play series. So the first question that I have for you today is what are mapping data flows in Data Factory? So this is also a very commonly asked questions, but uh, till now, we have not discussed on data flows, right? So this play series, I am trying to focus more on mapping data flows. So uh, when you talk about data flows, uh, you should understand that till now we have been talking about pipelines. We have been seeing pipelines, right? So pipelines are nothing but an orchestration flow. Pipelines give you an orchestration flow. It gives you a data movement flow. So inside pipelines, you use execute activity, you use for each activity, you use until activity. So this for each, until what are they exactly? If you see, they're not doing any kind of transformation. They are not transforming your data, but they are governing how your data is flowing. So your pipelines are essentially for orchestration, but for your transformations, you have mapping data flows in the data factory. So let me go back to the portal and show you if you go go to this portal right in the pipelines you have already seen that we have these kind of you know activities that are going in right so these are nothing but they're not transforming your data these are instead defining your data movement so if you want to go with the you know data transformation in that case you see this left hand side option of data flows right you can go ahead click on new data flow and then you will see that you have an option to add a source so let's click on add a source then you will see that it shows uh, you know us to add a source so similarly you know you can add a source and after adding a source you can apply any xyz transformations so to apply the transformations you have to click on this plus symbol over here and you will see that these are the transformations so these transformations are not present in the pipelines right so this is what your data flow is so let's say you have a file and then in that case you want to join it with the second source you can add a source here so let's say if i click over here i can add source Two. Similarly, I can add n number of sources over here. Just I can go click, uh, I can start clicking over here and you can see I have number of sources. So even if I want to join, I can, um, sorry, I'll go back. It's a conditional split, but anyway, uh, you can add, uh, you know, let's say you want to add a join over here. You can join it. And once you click on join, it will ask you what is your input stream? Like what is your left stream? What is your right stream? What type of join it is there? So these kind of transformation, it goes and uh, it can perform for you similarly it can go and you know uh, you know you can do a conditional split you can do exist union lookup derived column if you want to have another column based on set of um, you know existing column in that case you have a derived column option you have select aggregate surrogate key everything right uh, a normal uh, transformation activities what you you might require all those activities are present all those transformations are present in your data flow so this is essentially what your data flow is so let's move back to the ppt and see what is the next question so this is uh, regarding the pipelines if you see can see like most of the interviewers they might ask you this question as well to see how much uh, you know you have hands on with the data factory so they might ask you that let us consider you have to load 100 tables into another target right you have a source and you have a target and you want to load 100 tables from that then how would you design the pipeline for it they might ask you a pipeline design itself right now in this case what happens is so mostly your source will be a database interviewer will say that your source is a database and you want to load it somewhere xyz uh, target now if you have a database and you know that you have to load 100 tables and they, those 100 tables are present in one schema right then what you can do is instead of building 100 pipelines because most of the people you know they can even answer that okay i can go ahead and build 100 pipelines for each table okay but that is not something that the interviewer wants to listen from you right he wants to have an optimal solution for uh, this problem so in this case what you will do is um, in any database you have a system information schema right if you will check you have a system information schema which defines what is the what are the schemas present in in a particular schema what are the table names that are present what are the different features of that tables so all that information is present in the system schema so what you can do is you can simply go ahead do a query on system schema to fetch the hundred table names right 
So you have all the 100 table names from just one query, right? That can be, you can use, uh, you know, you, you can list all those 100 tables. And after you have listed all those 100 tables using a single query, right? That can be a simple lookup query, right? In the lookup, uh, in the lookup activity, I've already explained, you can write a simple query, one liner query to get 100 tables from the information schema. And then you can have uh, for loop for each of those tables. So once you have a for loop for each of those 100 tables, that for loop will actually run and copy your data for each of those 100 tables, right? So this is how you can go ahead and design the pipeline. In fact, uh, it's okay. I can actually show you over here as well. But yeah, I do not have, you know, well-defined setup of source and target over here right now. But, uh, you know, essentially I can give you a very good idea. So let's say you have this lookup, right? Inside lookup, you can see in the settings option, you can go ahead and, pro you know, you can give your source data set. The moment you give your source data set, other options will start appearing. Um, right now, I don't have a source data set. I don't have a database link. But yeah, moment you have it, it will ask you, you know, if you want to write a query, you can write a query to fetch it and then to fetch the list of the tables, right? List of the tables that you want to load and then you can go ahead and have this for each. Uh, let me type, yeah. So this is the iteration, right? For each. So you can actually connect it to this and then for each of these, uh, you know, tables uh, one by one, it can go inside this for each loop and it, you can, you know, copy the data from one place to another. So this is, you know, the flow, this is how your flow of the pipeline will look like. Of course, you can do error handling and a lot of other fancy stuffs over here. But yeah, for now, let me go back uh, to the next question. So how do you handle duplicate rows in data flows? So when you talk about data flows, this is also, again, one of the very common question asked, commonly asked question, how do you handle duplicate rows in data flows? Now for this, again, I'll go back to the portal and this is the data flow. Now here exactly, if you see, I'll actually click over here. You can see that there is an option of aggregate, right? So you can go ahead and try to aggregate as simple as that. It is a really simple question. Even if you, you know, have to handle duplicates in SQL or do what you do, you can go ahead and, you know, you can perform an aggregate and try to remove those duplicates, right? So this is how you can go ahead and try to do aggregate. This is a simple aggregate, actually. There is nothing, you know, fancy over here. Um, it's just a drag and drop and select option, right? Because the code is already developed in the background you don't do essentially anything you just select your source your target and your conditions group by conditions over here so aggregate is the option for that and then similarly let's say if you want to since i have already added conditional split over here i'll explain you about conditional split also so let's say you have data coming in from the source and you want to you know split it based on conditions into two different uh, you know flows so in that case you define the split conditions over here right if you see uh, inside this, you actually, uh, you provide your source and you pro you might provide any, uh, you know, your input, let's say you can say that when the input any column XYZ is greater than five, right? In that case, uh, you know, pass it over here, otherwise pass it over here. In the similar way, you can do it for the nulls as well. So if a pipeline has null, uh, you know, pass it on to here, otherwise pass it uh, in the otherwise rest of the columns, which do not have nulls, pass it over here. So just splitting, this is just a conditional splitting of the data. And then let me go back over here to the next question that we have, right? In fact, I've already explained you if I'm not wrong, this conditional split in data flow. If you are, if your input column has date and you get bad record in that column, how do you handle it? So uh, what I explained to you just now was mostly, you know, for uh, nulls or you want to split it on any conditions right now, this question. So an interviewer might twist the question a little bit here and there, but you should be um, you know, very proactive in understanding what exactly does it mean. So what he's asking, like you have a date column in the file, but instead of that date, you are getting a var care. Now you want to do, uh, now you want to remove those, right? You don't want to have those records. Now for that, again, you can go ahead, you can do a conditional split. In that conditional split, you can define, you know, what kind of, uh, you know, data you are expecting, right? Open expression builder. 
Now here you can actually write in the expression and you can define that if, if it is a date column how I want it to be right if that condition is true in that case it will flow otherwise it will flow other records to which do not match the conditional split condition those two records will flow to the other side right so all the eligible records will go in the one direction right so this is just a conditional split and these are all like very basic stuff if you have worked on any XYZ EGL tool, this is really very easy. So even by looking at these, uh, you know, uh, names itself, you will understand what exactly they are trying to do. Rank, window, pivot, unpivot, surrogate key. If you want to ge generate a surrogate key, you can do that. Aggregate. Why do we use aggregate for, right? You know all, already. So if you want to flatten, you want to pass, you want to stringify, all these conditions are already there. So this is basically data transformation. Now I'll go back to the next question which is what is the difference between pipeline and a data flow now this is also again a very you know simple question what is the difference right now, now when you talk about pipelines and data flows I've already explained you everything right so this is the pipeline where you go ahead and build the pipeline and this is the data flow now data flow is all about the transformation what do you do inside data flow the moment i came inside data flow you can see that i have a source and then i started adding conditions right if i want to add a new column remove null you know, i want to do a filter or any xyz thing right so these are all transformations right modifiers basically and then um, i kind of build a data flow out of it now the same data flow i can go ahead and call it inside my pipeline so if you see in the pipelines uh, if i type data flow over here here you go so you can actually see that there is a data flow available right so i can let's say i have copied the data from one place to another now once i have copied it i want to run some kind of transformation now in that case i go ahead build a data flow call this data flow over here and then in the settings i just specify the name of the data flow right so this is how your data flow looks like and pipelines are just the orchestration the data movement data flows are the data transformation activities and apart from that, I would also like to tell you, if you see on the screen right now in the settings option, you have integration runtime, compute time, core count, logging level. So this is nothing but uh, essentially what is happening is it is running on uh, just like you say you have Databricks, right? You run your code on a set of virtual machines, right? In the similar way, these computations, these are what? These are computations. So these are running on some, on some set of machines. So that configuration is provided here. Your Azure integration runtime, your compute type, it is similar to your Databricks cluster, right? It is memory optimized or it is general optimized like that. Similarly, how many number of cores do you want, right? The number of core increases the number, your, like your degree of copy parallelism increases, uh, degree of parallelism increases in general. Similarly, logging level. And these are the things. So data flows are, uh, will essentially run on a set of virtual machines on some um, on some set of clusters basically, right? So this is pretty much actually that I wanted to cover in this video. I wanted to keep this video pretty short and thank you so much for being till here. Do let me know in the comment section if you have any issues and you want me to make video on some other topic. And do remember to like, like subscribe and share this video. Thank you so much.